Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis, video number 10. And in this video, we got to continue talking about measures of central location. And we get to talk about the weighted mean. This is something that you probably have done before. You just didn't know it was called the weighted mean because it's something we do in business all the time. Now, we covered a lot about measures of central tendency and the mean calculation in the last video. In this video, we get to cover weighted mean. And here's our formula. And all it involves is taking the sum of the weights times the particular x divided by the sum of the weights. Now, it doesn't look the same as our mean calculation last video, but really it's disguised as a regular mean calculation. And here's what I mean. Here's a data set. If we want to calculate the mean, we use the average function. When we highlight the values, it'll automatically add them up and divide by the count. So when I hit Enter, we get our mean calculation. But what does that have to do with the weighted mean calculation? Well, if we look at the numbers that the mean calculation added, and we'll just look at these three sixes. What did it do? 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. Well, if there's three sixes, if we built a frequency distribution from that data set, created a unique list with the frequencies, then one of the rows would have the particular value x and the frequency or the count, or in this formula, it's called a weight. So 6 times 3 is 18, the same as we got over here. So as long as you have a frequency distribution with your unique list and the frequencies for all of the unique items, then this formula will work. Now there's two different ways that we can complete this formula. One is to use a helper column. The other is to use a single cell formula. Now we'll look at the helper column first. And the goal is to calculate the numerator. So we type an equal sign. I highlight the entire column of x values. Then I multiply by the entire column of weights. Now notice I'm multiplying two columns, each with six values. So Excel will know to take each individual corresponding item, multiply. And when I hit Enter, the results spill into the worksheet. But every cell below the top cell has the grayed out formula. The actual formula only lives in the top cell. But there, we get what we want. 6 times 3 is 18. Now we need to add to get the numerator, Alt equals. And notice the formula is smart enough to know that the formula only lives in the top cell. That spilled range operator, the pound or hashtag, that means always get everything that spills from F9. When I hit Enter, I get the total for the numerator. Now we need to calculate the denominator, Alt equals. Notice that's not a spilled array, so it gets the range inside of sum. When I hit Enter, that's the denominator. So equals the sum of the x's times the weights divided by the sum of the weights. And when I hit Enter, I get exactly the same thing, as if we had all the values and we calculated the mean. Now there's a shorter and easier way to calculate this, because most of the time we just do not need this column. Remember, the numerator needs to multiply these and then add. Well, the perfect function for that is sum product. We put array 1, comma, array 2, and the product part of sum product will multiply the corresponding elements, and then the sum part will add. Close parentheses. If I hit F9 to evaluate, I better get 74, and I do. That's the numerator. Control Z. The denominator, I carefully click at the end, divide, and I need to sum the weights. And close parentheses, that formula works. I don't need any of these calculations. Of course, this formula doesn't work now, but most of the time, that's how we're going to calculate weighted mean. Now I'm going to Control Z. Now we want to scroll over and look at a great business example. 
Now we have a table of data here that represents the purchases last year of the Quad Boomerang product. This column has the date we made the purchase. Here's the quantity, and here's the price. So on 1-2-21, we bought 108 quads at 24.30. On 2.15, we bought 72 at 26.45. And the accounting department needs the weighted average or weighted mean. Statisticians will call it weighted mean. Accountants would call it weighted average. But we need that calculation to calculate cost of goods sold. That's a number that goes on the income statement. And the related ending inventory, that's a number that goes on the balance sheet. Now, here's our formula. And all we need are weights and x values. Well, quantity purchased, those will be the weights. And price for each particular transaction, those will be the particular x values. Now, we'll calculate the denominator first, which is total units. Alt equals, it guesses wrong, but no problem. I'll redirect it, highlight quantity purchased, and Enter. So the number of quads purchased for the year, 1,020. Now total inventory value, that's a calculation the accountants need. But it's also the numerator in our weighted mean calculation. And to calculate it, we multiply quantity purchase times price per unit, and then add. Sounds like the perfect job for the Excel function, sum product. Now in Array 1, we can put in either column first, because multiplication can be done in any order. So I'll put quantity purchased in to Array 1, comma, price per unit, into Array 2. And when I hit Enter, I get total inventory value and the numerator amount we need for our weighted average. So weighted average equals up arrow to get total inventory value divided by up arrow twice to get total units. And when I hit Enter, there's my weighted average, $22.82. So on average, we pay $22.82 for that quad product. Now we can use that to make our calculations. Now the accountants went out and counted, and the units left on the shelf in 2021 were 155. So to calculate ending inventory, we take 155 units times our weighted average weighted mean. And when I hit Enter, there's ending inventory. Now for cost of goods sold, there are two different ways we can calculate it. The first way, well, we already calculated total inventory value. So we can take that and subtract the ending inventory number that we just calculated. And when I hit Enter, that's the cost of goods sold expense. We also could have taken, in parentheses, total units purchased for the whole year minus the number we had on the shelf, close parentheses, times weighted average. And it better be exactly the same. And it is. We could also check total inventory, Alt equals. And when I add ending inventory and cost of goods sold, when I hit Enter, I get the same amount. Now, sometimes when we're calculating weighted average like this, we're not given the frequencies. We're given the percent frequencies. And if we are, the formula is even easier than this weighted mean formula. Now, let's remind ourselves what percent frequency is. That means we take the frequency, or in our case, the quantities, each one of these, and compare it to the total. So off to the side, I'm going to make an array formula equals highlight all of the frequencies divided by the 1,020. Now, when we make an array formula like this, each one of these individual amounts will be in the numerator. And every calculation will use that single denominator. So when I hit Enter, and I've already pre-formatted this using home and then percentage with two decimals showing. Now, the beauty of the percent frequency column here is now that we have this, we simply multiply each individual price by each individual percent. And when we total them, we get the same thing. And if we scroll over, oftentimes the accounting department will actually give you the prices and then the percent frequency. And here's the formula, the sum of percent frequency times the particular x. So down here, anytime we're multiplying two columns and then adding, we use sum product. 
in array one, there's all the prices. Comma, array two, there's the percent frequencies. And when I hit Enter, there we go, 2282. Now, if we have the number of units sold, cost of goods sold becomes number of units sold times the weighted average, and Enter. Now, for ending inventory, we don't have the number of units sitting on the shelf, but we can calculate it. Total units for the whole year minus number of units sold, close parentheses, and then we multiply that by our weighted average. And there you go. If you're given particular x's and the correct percent frequency that always add up to 100, that's how you can calculate your weighted mean. All right, in this video, we saw three examples of how to calculate a weighted mean or a weighted average. We saw the percent frequency times the particular x method. Chapter 5, that'll be called expected value. We saw a great accounting example here where we used weighted average to calculate cost of goods sold and ending inventory. And we started it off by looking at this awesome formula, which is really just a disguise for the mean calculation. All right, we'll see you next video.